Yellowstone Volcano New Discoveries, anomalous underground structure beneath the volcano line, and there is continual basalt intrusion in the supervolcano. Yellowstone New Revelations Supervolcano has a different history than we previously thought. This is on fizz.org. The long dormant Yellowstone supervolcano in the American West, which is also a part of the Ring of Fire, has a different history than the past from what we thought, according to a new study by a Virginia Tech geoscientists. Scientists have long thought Yellowstone caldera, part of the Rocky Mountains, located mostly in Wyoming, is powered by heat from the Earth's core, similar to most volcanoes, such as the recently active Kilauea in Hawaii. But new research published in Nature Geoscience by Ying Zhu, Associate Professor at Virginia Tech College of Science Department, Geosciences, shows a different past. He found that there is something wedged between the present-day western United States and the Pacific Ocean. The ancient ocean plate broken into pieces just like the seafloor of the Pacific today. Yellowstone Supervolcano Update The supervolcano has a different history than previously thought. Virginia Tech updated this July 26, 2018. This is the location of the Yellowstone Hotspot Track. The triangles indicate general locations of the Yellowstone and Snake River Plain age progressive volcanoes. With ages shown in millions of years plotted on a topography map of western United States. And as you can see, there's at least eight volcanoes there. The long dormant Yellowstone supervolcano in the American West has a different history than previously thought. This is according to a new study by Virginia Tech geoscientist. Scientists have long thought that Yellowstone caldera, part of the Rocky Mountains and located mostly in Wyoming, is powered by heat from the Earth's core, similar to most volcanoes, such as the recently active Kilauea volcano in Hawaii that started erupting recently in, on May 3rd and is still ongoing. However, new research published in Nature Geoscience by Ying Zhu, an associate professor with the Virginia Tech College of Sciences Department of Geosciences, shows a different past. Quote, in this research, there was no evidence of heat coming directly up from the Earth's core to power the surface volcano at Yellowstone, you said, and he, he continued. Instead, the underground images we capture suggest that Yellowstone volcanoes were produced by a gigantic ancient ocean plate that dove under the western United States about 30 million years ago. Let me read that again. Instead, the underground images we captured suggest that Yellowstone volcanoes were produced by a gigantic Asian ancient ocean plate that dove under the western United States about 30 million years ago. This ancient ocean plate broke into pieces, resulting in perturbations of unusual rocks in the mantle, which led to volcanic eruptions in the past 16 million years." End quote. The eruptions were very explosive, Zhu added. The theoretical seismologist Zhu created X-ray-like images of the Earth's deep interior from USRA, part of the EarthScope project funded by the National Science Foundation, and he discovered an anomalous underground structure at a depth of about 250 to 400 miles right beneath the line of these volcanoes. Zhu said, this evidence was in direct contradiction to the plume model. In her study, Zhu found the new images of the Earth's deep interior showed that the oceanic Farallon plate, which used to be where the Pacific Ocean is now, wedged itself beneath the present-day western United States. The ancient oceanic plate was broken into pieces 
just like the seafloor in the Pacific today. A section of the subducted oceanic plate started tearing off and sinking down to the deep earth. The sinking section of oceanic plate slowly pushed hot materials upward to form the volcanoes that now make up Yellowstone. Further, the series of volcanoes that make up Yellowstone have been slowly moving, achingly so, ever since. Quote, the process started at the Oregon-Idaho border about 16 million years ago and propagated northwestward, forming a line of volcanoes that are progressively younger as they stretch northwest to present-day Wyoming, Zhu added. The previously held plume model was used to explain the unique Yellowstone hotspot track, the line of volcanoes in Oregon, Idaho, and Wyoming that dots part of the Midwest. Quote, if the North American plate was moving slowly over a position fixed plume at Yellowstone, it will displace old volcanoes towards the Oregon-Idaho border and form a line of volcanoes, but such a deep plume has not been found, Zhu said. So what caused the track? Zhu intends to find out. The track of volcanoes, that is. Quote, it has always been a problem there, and scientists have tried to come up with different ways to explain the cause of Yellowstone volcanoes, but it has been unsuccessful, she said, adding that hotspot tracks are more popular in oceans, such as, as the Hawaii Islands. The frequent geyser eruptions at Yellowstone are, of course, of course not volcanic eruptions with magma, but due to superheated water. The last Yellowstone super eruption was about 630,000 years ago, according to experts. Zhu has no predictions on when or if Yellowstone could erupt again. The use of the X-ray-like images for this study is unique in itself. Just as humans can see objects in a room when the light is on, Zhu said seismometers can see structures deep within the Earth when an earthquake occurs. The vibrations spread out and create waves when they hit rocks. The waves are detected by seismometers and used in what is known as diffraction tomography. Quote, this is the first time the new imaging theory has been applied to this type of seismic data, which allows us to see anomalous structures in the Earth's mantle that would otherwise not be resolvable using traditional methods, Zhu said. Zhu will continue her study of Yellowstone. Quote, the next step will be to increase the resolution of the X-ray-like images of the underground rock. More detailing, detailed images of the unusual rocks in the, depth, the deep earth will allow us to use computer simulation to create the fragmentation of the gigantic oceanic plate and test different scenarios of how rock melting and magma feeding system work for the Yellowstone volcanoes." End quote. This is by uh, Virginia Tech on Nature Geosource on FIS.org. Yellowstone supervolcano has continual intrusion of basalt and it could be devastating to society if we have another super eruption. These are the claims of USGS scientists. These are the explanations given by Dr. Lowenstern. The Yellowstone volcano eruption could be absolutely devastating to modern society even if the likelihood of it happening is low. This is what USGS geologists spectacularly announced, even if the likelihood of happening is low. The Yellowstone supervolcano rests, as we know, northwest corner of the U.S. state of Wyoming, extending into Montana and Idaho. It's erupted three times in the past. The three caldera-forming eruptions shaping the landscape around Yellowstone, covering the land in volcanic fallout, ash, and smoke. Yellowstone last erupted 640,000 years ago, and that's what formed the current day features of Yellowstone caldera. The geologists cannot predict when another such 
super eruption blast will go off, but if it matches the past eruptions, the results, of course, would be catastrophic. Jake Lowenstern, the geologist formerly in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, explained that another super eruption could be devastating even if the chances of it happening are minimal, of course. If it happens, it happens. Yellowstone Volcano monitored for worrying signs of activity by the YVO. It's a branch of the U.S. Geological Survey. The USGS tracks all instances of seismic and hydrothermal movement in order to gouge the volcano's potential for eruption. Unfortunately, even the most sophisticated instruments can't predict when the volcano will blow. There are currently no imminent or long-term signs the volcano is acting out of normal. If the Yellowstone supervolcano was to erupt in the foreseeable future, the blast would be preceded by intense and very obvious seismic activity. Dr. Lowenstern explained, trying to serve as a source of public information on this topic is clearly a no-win deal. And yes, these kinds of events do occur somewhere on Earth every few ten thousand, tens or thousands of years. And yes, if it happens, it could be devastating to society. But, he says, no, there is a minimum chance Yellowstone is going to erupt this century. And we are not hiding evidence to the contrary. Get over it, he says. According to the USGS, the next big blast most likely to occur at Yellowstone is a hydrothermal one, not an eruptive one. And from one of our past videos, this did happen in, a, in an area which is now a lake. That happened about 3,000 years ago. And that was a quite a big lake, actually. I can't remember the dimensions of it. But if, if you look at it, it's quite sizable. And that was from a hydrothermal blast about 3,000 years ago. He says, not all news concerning Yellowstone is bad. Dr. Lowenstern, who left his post at YVO in 2018, said he has many fond memories in his 15 years in the park. Writing for the weekly Caldera Chronicles of YVO, the geologist shared the five things he misses most about Yellowstone. Among his fondest memories are his hiking trips to the wilderness, the landscape, and the diverse wildlife of Yellowstone. Lowenstern says the geysers, where else do you get to work in a place with geysers? Somehow, however, steamboat geyser erupted only six times during my tenure, he said, including only two in the last 11 years somehow. Somewhere, somehow, steamboat geyser erupted only six times during my tenure, he says, including only two last 11 years, post-2006. With 68 and counting, Eruptions in 2018 and 2019, I'm starting to take this personally, he said. Okay, now one of our videos yesterday, we explained as to what happens somewhere in the world. There will be a super eruption, they say, about every 17,000 years. That's quite a short geological time frame, if you, if you take it into account of the Earth's history. 17, every 17,000 years... You have a super eruption of a super volcano. And the last time this has happened was 26 and a half thousand years ago. So, just for a source of information from uh, Wikipedia concerning super volcanoes, we have about 20 of them worldwide. Two of them, as we know, are, if, if there are, well, there must be some more that we may not know of, for example, in New Mexico. But we have Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano, and we have Yellowstone Supervolcano, and those are two that we know of. They're a very high threat, and also they, have, they share the same magma body. Um, the supervolcano, a large volcano that has had an eruption with volcanic explosivity index of VE8, the largest possible value on the index, this means the volume of deposit for that eruption is greater than 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles. Supervolcanoes are when magma in the mantle rises into the crust but it's unable to break through and the pressure builds in a large growing magma pool 
Until the crust is unable to continue and contain the pressure, this can occur at hot spots, for example, uh, Okay, one of them is Yellowstone, another is uh, Kilauea, Hawaii, another one is Iceland, okay. Now, if this can occur at hotspots, for example, Yellowstone Caldera, or at subduction zones, for example, Toba, the Toba eruption was 74,000 years ago, and that uh, was at an extinction level event. Very few animals, species survived that, and they, anthropologists say just basically a thousand couples survived or not even 10,000 people. There was a bottlenecking. Very few humans survived that. Um, that was a super eruption. Now, large volume super volcanic eruptions are also often associated with large igneous provinces, which can cover up areas with lava and volcanic ash. These can cause long-lasting climate change, such as triggering a small ice age, and threaten species with extinction. An ice age, as we know, is a long period of reduction in the temperature of the Earth's surface and atmosphere, resulting in the presence or expansion of continental and polar ice sheets and alpine glaciers. Earth's climate alternates between ice ages and greenhouse periods, during which there are no glaciers. And threatening species with extinctions. An extinction event is a widespread and a rapid decrease in the biodiversity on Earth, such as an event, an event is identified by a sharp change in the diversity and abundance of multicellular organisms. It occurs when the rate of extinction increases with respect to the rate of speciation. The Oruani eruption of New Zealand's Tapo volcano about 26 and a half thousand years ago was the world's most recent super eruption at a VE8 eruption, okay? They estimate that uh, this takes place about every 17,000 years, so we're basically 10,000, uh, sorry, yeah, about 10,000 years overdue a super eruption. Okay, this is from Wikipedia, and there's a list here of quite a few super eruptions that took place uh, in the United States, the continent of the United States. I'll leave a link below for you for that. You can take a look at the chart to see the dates of when that happened. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.